This video is a two for one. And the first part we'll be looking at Potabi Beta 3. And the second part will be, well, to put it mildly, me fumbling around trying to get Bluetooth 4.0 working. And I do to a certain extent. And the reason why it's a two for one is I felt that both parts were too short really to have a video on their own. So I'll put them together and you get two for one. As usual, I'll be using my test machine and we'll be looking at uh, Potabi. You have to excuse if I'm saying it wrong to the developer, but my pronunciation of things is not the best in the world. Um, looking at Beta 3. And as suggested in the actual website itself, it says this release is a beta release and it's not recommended for production use. It's also before the creation of Core NGS, which will be taken over from FreeBSD down the line. And it's still FreeBSD as its core, and this changes in later releases. So, yeah. Looking at the release notes, it says the added build systems for software, not in repository, added DUAS, added V language compiler, linked sudo root and admin commands to DUAS, linked package command to PKG, removed Mate desktop, which is a shame because I like Mate, and added Lumina, which uh, is an interesting decision. So it's a live CD or a live DVD, a live session, if you wish. Um, really, with installation, really not recommended at the moment. So we'll be just looking at it as a live session. And indeed, looking at the uh, release notes again, it says, Warning, installation doesn't properly function yet. While your system will install FreeBSD, it doesn't install Patabi. This is neither a mistake nor by design. This is just that we haven't worked on installation tools yet. If you want to experiment a little with graphical Patabi, run these steps until you exit them. Yeah. I won't be doing that. Shouldn't really install it just yet. I mean, I have looked at this before, this review, and this can't really be an in-depth review because the overall operating system isn't finished yet. It's um, still basically just FreeBSD uh, in the live session. So there's only a minimal amount of um, things to look at. So we'll we work what we've got. I think, although I could be wrong, it uses the GhostBSD uh, live session mechanism, which basically just loads it to uh, RAM, a swap-based uh, mem disk. Right, there we go. A nice little uh, graphical login, Potabi live user, and yeah, everything looks uh, as you would expect, really. Uh, doesn't seem to be any way to log in. Uh, we'll just log in that way, so presumably it'll use root. Ah, oh, screensaver, that's interesting. Oh, it's actually uh, the latest version of 2020. Mm. Right, yeah, so Lumina. Um, I haven't used Lumina for a long time, so it doesn't seem to have changed. Uh, although I think this is 1.60, there is a new one out with some cosmetic and technical changes, so uh, that's for a future video. Uh, Firefox in the favourites. Well, uh, check the internet out, actually, because I was reading in the instructions, or the release notes, really, that you have to do a BSD config. So uh, we'll just uh, ping Google. Yeah, we'll just need to configure this. So, BSD config. Right, so I'm just going to get on with this and uh, come back when it's finished. Right, we now configure the internet. It should work properly. So, everything feels uh, as it normally does, nice and snappy. There's a little uh, right menu when you click on it. I don't want to log out just yet. Uh, cancel that. So, going down to the bottom left here, you can see the actual main menu again. And there's Firefox there in favourites. You've got preferences. Oh, we are actually using root, so that's uh, as I thought. Got clock down there. Calendar. You've got a little information screen, which never populates straight away. Not even when I uh, reviewed TrueOS uh, all those years back. Even though the internet's working, it's, uh, it just takes its time. So yes, so we've got uh, browse applications and browse files. We'll have a look at the version of um, Firefox. I would imagine it's the latest one. It's uh, straight from the FreeBSD repositories. Uh, if I could work out how to get there, there you go. Firefox. Yeah, it's 94.0, which is good, which is the latest one. And what else can we have a look at? Um, preferences. Very sparse and basic of uh, Lumina. Oh, it's set to Afrikaans. That's very interesting. Oh, and there, all the information just popped up there. In, oh, in fact, let's have a look. It says, it's with great sadness that we are announcing 
I think, uh, yeah, Project Trident is going away. Well, you know, to be honest, it, it went away for me when it shifted from um, FreeBSD to Void Linux. Once it did that, it it was gone for me, which is a shame because it was um it wasn't a bad OS. Lumina was trying to be something different, and the OS itself was FreeBSD based. So, but once they decided to shift away from FreeBSD, that was it for me. But never mind. Things change. So looking at the uh, programs available, the applications available, you've got the usual uh, basic things. And yeah, th there's nothing else added to here that makes Potavi uh, its own thing at the moment. Kai, the main developer, says that um, things will be added later and... Uh, a more personalized stamp will be put on it, which will be welcome, I think. So looking at this, you've got the basic applications. Uh, the thing about Lumina is um, it is not the, it's not the prettiest. It's not the most aesthetic. The, the applications get the job done, you see, but, you know, it's not going to win a prize for the best, uh, best looking. So you've got all the various uh, things that you need. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all good. This is really a difficult for it's a difficult um review for me is this because I want to I want to review it but there's not that much to review at the moment so uh, I just wanted to give a little shout out to um Kai and Potavi and just really to let people know that it's on track it's still slowly on track but it's still on track so yes, right-clicking gives you the menu, and uh, you can access the same things as the main menu down at the bottom. Just in case you can't be bothered going all the way down at the bottom. You got top, so let's how much memory. Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, you have to bear in mind it is RAM-based at the moment. Is this uh, session the amount of RAM used will be considerably lower once we install it? And then we got some applications. You got network, office, settings, etc. Yes, we'll have a look at desktop information just to confirm the version. Yes, look. Uh, desktop version 1.6.0. And preferences, we'll have a look at the uh, wallpapers. And yeah, there's, there's be just one available. And that's the default. The wallpaper settings uh, system <laughs> in Lumina is um, it's not the easiest to navigate. But we've only just got one at the moment, so that's um, to be expected, I suppose. We'll see what um, has been loaded up into the system. So we have got uh, yeah, a very basic amount. So, uh, so we'll have a look at we'll have a look at this. Package thing. It says the package manual tool. Yeah, we'll just bootstrap it first. So apparently, sim links the the package command to PKG. So we'll say, oh, so look, not enough arguments. So so just running PK just so just running package as you would run PKG first time. It brings up an error. Okay. Oh well. So running PKG itself, uh, you can search for things as you would normally in FreeBSD, of course. And there's uh, LibreOffice. So I wonder if uh, Kai is listening to this. I wonder if you, you're going to include some kind of word processor or Office um, application as part of your final release. If you are, that's that's great. And if you're not, then just uh, can you let us know why? Because I'd be interested to find out. So there we are, we've installed uh, LibreOffice, just to mount in the, um, the proc partitions. So yes, it's all good. I mean, it's, it, I suppose if anything, at this current moment in time, it will give you a, um, a live FreeBSD OS to play with. And there we go, there's LibreOffice, and I think it's the latest version. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, 
Just one of the latest versions, if not the latest version. Very nice. And who says FreeBSD doesn't have the latest software? Hmm? Close that. And close that. And well, that's it. Yeah, this is difficult to review this because um, I want to review Protavi, but there's really not that much at the moment which is Protavi. It is a uh, very early piece of work. We've just some uh, branding at the beginning, and the rest of it's FreeBSD, or in fact, just really GhostBSD, but instead of Mate, it's uh, Lumina. So, uh, yes, yeah, very interesting. And, um, yeah, I feel kind of unfulfilled in some respects in the sense that uh, I can't give you the review I want to give you. But this is really just a quick look at the current state of Patavi. And it changes all the time with Kai. You know, statements get released saying, um, I'm going to change this, I'm going to drop that. I mean, one of them, the other day I saw a tweet and he says, Ion Shell is going to be used, which is an interesting choice. And also that the Linux later or the Linux ABI is not going to be, or in fact, Wine is not going to be officially supported. So, uh, I mean, I understand that it's uh, it's an ongoing process, but things do change quite quite fast there. And so, as you see it right now, is the current state of play. It probably change next week, and if it does, I'll uh, I'll do another review if I can. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. I decided, for the laugh, to get a Bluetooth 4.0 dongle and see if I could get it working on FreeBSD 13. And the result wasn't too bad. And I'll show you down at the end of the video, really, um, what I got. Now, most of this is not um, its not tutorial, because most of this I was just following what it said on the FreeBSD handbook page about um, Bluetooth. Support so uh, HCC control. And it actually picked up, um, it picked up my phone, which was, uh, I was wanting to scan for Bluetooth. And it also picked up a pair of Bluetooth headphones, which was good at the bottom. But it's the phone that I'll be concentrating on with this. So putting in the, uh, the Blu-ray device, putting in the Bluetooth device address. You can see the little uh, address there. I've just highlighted and pasted it in. And it says it's connected. It's also named, uh, identified as a Hawaii uh, Wi-Fi 2019 phone. So that's really quite impressive so far. Now it's, it says it's connected and it's identifying it. So I'm just going to edit the Bluetooth host file. And it already comes with a, a dummy entry, as it were, under the phone. And underneath it is when I was trying my headphones uh, earlier. So I'm just going to uh, comment that out. Oop, don't know. And underneath, we'll just um, copy and paste the address of the phone that we want to connect to. There we go. And the shorthand for Wi Fi. We'll save that. Edit uh, HCSCCD con file. The HCI security daemon configuration file. In this one, we're just going to assign the uh, whether or not we use a pin or whether we use a key, etc. So we're just going to put in the correct address at the top. Change that to Y5. The entry that I just uh, I'm pasted in and I'm actually co I'm changing is just like a, a template really, and I'm going to try zero 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 as a pin this time. Although you can try one two three four, it depends. And then at the bottom, that's a better view. Actually, you can see what's going on now. So you run the daemon, and it should run in the background. Now I'm going to install Obex app, which should, by all intents and purposes, allow you to transfer files to and from your Bluetooth uh, phone or device. So using what examples are given, 
Yeah, I've heard that if you try it and then you get an error, you just retry it again. It should work. But I'm going to actually get the HCC control going first. Leave that running. And then retry that. Again, again, this is not a tutorial because I'm working my way through it as it uh, as I read it. It was really me just experimenting. So, if we achieve anything, it's uh, it's an added bonus. For those people more, for those people more experienced with this, which will be practically everybody, maybe you can take this and run with it better than I can, and uh, a tutorial will be fantastic. So. I think we're connecting again. Retry. I think we have something there. Yeah, it seems to be holding. And I'll take a screenshot from my phone. And there it is. It says Bluetooth pairing request. So we're getting somewhere. And beyond this, though, it I couldn't get it going. So um, I know I've configured it incorrectly somewhere. But it's a great step. So provisionally, Bluetooth 4.0. I know we've got Bluetooth 5 coming out. Oh, it's already out already. But Bluetooth 4.0 is kind of working on FreeBSD, so that's uh, that's kind of cool. If you uh, have any tips or uh, you know of any detailed instructions or actually want to write a tutorial how to connect a Bluetooth to a device, that'd be great. I'll make a video out of it. I'll credit it to you. But anyway, uh, that was a non-tutorial me just fumbling around in the dark trying to get things going. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.